Hello, and welcome back to Beyond Teaching, Season 2, the pandemic miniseries for Thanksgiving week. Food for thought. Hmm, is there such a thing as a run-on title? We're pleased to be returning to you on the Psych Sessions Network. This series is hosted by Susan Nolan from Seton Hall University, Adiyinka Akinsular Smith from City College, New York, City University, New York, Asani Sewell from Pacific University, and yours truly, Eric Landrum from Boise State University. That's right, this is a five part mini series, all released during Thanksgiving week in the U.S. 2021. All of these episodes are pandemically themed. You know, the gift that keeps on giving. And we're recorded from May 24th through October 4th, 2021. What are you in for? Oh, the places we'll go. Each day, Monday through Friday of the break, we'll release a new episode. You'll hear us discuss issues such as stopping the tenure clock, publication lags and research productivity, the challenges of campus mask mandates, vaccines and vaccine mandates, the joy and anxiety of returning to face-to-face -face instruction, online conferences and plausible solutions, DoorDash appears, ah, the curmudgeon, you can guess who that was, travel budget privilege, student pandemic sluggishness, frog swallowing, what, what? Weekend fund and hobbies. Beyond Teaching will launch season three on Wednesday, December 1st, and we'll make one episode available for 10 consecutive Wednesdays in the same manner as we did for season one. In the meantime, please enjoy this season two pandemically themed mini series suitable for binge listening over your break or whenever you want. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Beyond Teaching. It's been feels like it's been a mile. Hello, it's been a colleagues. It's been a minute. Hello. It's been a minute. It's been, is it been a minute or a New York minute or a it's New been... Jersey minute? <laughs> it's, or a Boise. Yeah. They're slow out here. They feel really slow compared to an East Coast minute. We're missing our colleague Asani. We'll look forward to catching up with her. In our little warm up in our green room, we were just celebrating a delightful thing that happened to Yinka. Yinka, would you share again for our listeners what just happened at APA 2021 for you, please? So Division 52, <clears throat> which is the international wing arm of um, APA, very generously honored me with their inaugural Jean Lao Chin Award for International Leadership, I think it is. I have to go back and be clear. And yeah, she was an amazing clinical psychologist, professor of psychology, former dean at the Derner School of Psychology at Adelphi, just all around to women's rights, leadership. And sadly, she died earlier on this year. And her husband died before her, she died 17 days later of COVID from COVID-19 and was very active in APA, but also very active in this division. And they decided to honor her by creating an award in her name. And so it was like really incredible that I was nominated and was selected. Huge congratulations. That's wow, that so well-deserved. And I had the honor of meeting Jean on a few occasions through international stuff and what an incredible woman she is and what an honor to receive that inaugural award Yinka. Well, Susan you were very active in division 52 even before activities in division two you served as treasurer if I am I getting that right yes you served as yeah. treasurer and, as treasurer and I'm still a member mm -hmm. right you were very active yeah. and mm -hmm. so she sounds like a remarkable person but Yinka I think from what I know so far division 52 made an awesomely good choice and their first recipient of the award. Just from what, again, what I've learned about you and your work, congratulations to you and the Division 52 for honoring their colleague. What, what a great thing to do. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So we're back. It's the middle of August. I, I 
Yinka and I were speaking, our courses start a week from today, our semesters. How about you, Susan? When does uh, your fall semester... Uh, you're on semesters, right? Or We're you semesters, quarters? and we yeah. start two weeks from today. Oh, oh so you've you. got an extra week-long yes. reprieve. Yeah, so yeah, we're quarters. recording this, I should say, on August 16th, so yeah. that our listeners know yeah. what the our timing is. 2021. Another month, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, we thought we were coming out of the pandemic. Oops, maybe we're not. Um, we just in the past five days, my campus issued a mask mandate so that if you're on campus inside a building, you must wear a mask unless you're alone in your office. Mm -hmm. All of our courses, the in-person courses, are going to have mask mandates. I've got faculty members as department chair contacting me wanting to see if they can switch to online or hybrid, which is causing our administrators Ooh. above my head some kerfuffle. So I don't know, what would my colleagues like to talk about today? There's all kinds of things we could go for. Mm. We haven't really mapped this out. I'm just delighted to see you both on the screen, missing Asani, of course. I think one of the things that I've been talking with, uh, talking about with a lot of my psychology colleagues uh, and colleagues across the university is this issue of, of getting students to wear masks, even if it's mandated. And I've also been talking with some colleagues in parts of the country where there is no mask mandate in their school and they're not even supposed to bring it up. And so hearing lots of interesting ideas about how to encourage mask wearing regardless of that, because obviously given the Delta variant, the, mm -hmm. the science seems clear that we need to be wearing masks in, indoors until uh, we get enough people vaccinated. So maybe we could talk about some of our thoughts about how to do that. I have one colleague, I don't have permission to say who, I, I didn't ask, but who is starting her classes by showing pictures of loved ones in her life who are unvaccinated because of age or who are vaccinated, but are immunocompromised and trying mm. to set that sort of, let's be kind to these other people. We might be worried about ourselves. Also the idea of bringing masks to class to have them available and to get a norm going. Um, what are some mm. thoughts that you all have. I mean, here at, at City, this is kind of piggybacking off what Eric was saying. The expectation is that if you're on campus, you're masked and that you come on campus, you have been vaccinated or there is the, the whole testing, random testing that will happen. My classes this fall are all online. But again, having the conversations with students who are out there in the world uh, and how they are carrying themselves, what they're doing, I think is part of the ongoing conversation. We do also have a vaccination mandate, of course, with the medical and religious exceptions and a mask mandate that just doesn't necessarily translate into full compliance, but it's helpful that we have that. So at Seton Hall, we can easily say, you, you got to wear it. And I'm grateful for that policy. And I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because again, thinking beyond psych, I'm just thinking of other realms that we as psychologists function. I'm in a hospital setting where on Tuesdays I'm seeing patients and not all of my majority of them have been vaccinated. There are those who remain online, but there are those who come in. So again, it has been having conversations with them as it comes up around. So choices, why, how are you coming to this decision? What is it that you're afraid of? And, and I will tell you as much as there's this, you don't tell your patients personal business. If they, when they ask me and they have, I have said, yes, I have vaccinated. And these are the reasons why I've chosen to be right. vaccinated. Yeah, I think it's complicated and personal and there institutional differences and state differences, obviously. So at Boise State, we're not going to have a, a vaccine mandate. It's just a state institution that's just not going to happen, um, I don't think in my lifetime at least. But we do have an on-campus mask mandate. And so our policy is, so let's say I go, and I am teaching an in-person class with 85 students this coming semester. Hi. And so we're going to be in a classroom. And the policy is, if a student refuses to wear a mask, <clears throat> I'm supposed to cancel class. I'm supposed to dismiss class and send people home and then contact them with something to do to make up for that missed class. And then that th I note for the record what student disrupted class and report that to the Dean of Students Office by not wearing a mask. 
Now, that's the policy. Then if a student uh, does that a second time and disrupts class again, I dismiss class again. And in theory, what the policy says is that student is to be expelled from the university. So that is the public health risk that the university level is trying to signal to um, students to take it seriously. And of course, all faculty members have been instructed, you must wear a mask you know, at all times, unless you're in your office alone, so. Can I say, I, I get that, but here are the two concerns I have. One, that you as a faculty are put in the position of having to police everyone so that when students get angry and agitated, you are seen as it's your fault. And then, all the other students get punished. Yeah, no, you're, you're right, Yinka. And I think when we went into, when we came, when we did the grand pivot in March of 2020, I think the implementation was to have mask monitors that were going to be in classes. No, no I, I take it back. When we came back for fall, because mm-hmm. when we pivoted, we all went online. Came back in the fall, we had like voluntary mask monitors who were helping, who were handing out masks to people who showed up without them. But it's six on one, half a dozen of another. And I'm teaching a senior level capstone class. So these are senior psych majors. Okay. They may have a tendency to want to push the envelope, which in many ways I appreciate. They're seniors. They, they've got their own notions. But it's also kind of a zero tolerance thing too, because you just don't want people... Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want people infecting each other or yeah. scaring one another. I mean, that's probably the bigger concern. Mm. Mm. It's hard to make a one size fits all policy that's going to get everyone to comply. Yeah. And I was just say these are good examples for anyone teaching intro to psych in the mm. learning section. So what are um, the different types of reinforcement that we're using punishment? Punishers are sufficient enough mm-hmm. to get to the goal quickly. Yeah. yeah. And then also on top of that, adding modeling and yeah. also setting, trying to create a norm in your classroom. You can tell that Susan's right now in the middle of her chapter 15 revision of her, of her, <laughs> of her textbook. You can tell that that one's doing a couple of days. No, yeah, no, it's examples. in production. I'm not revising anything right now. Yay. <laughs> All right. Good for her. Um, and I'm not teaching each other this fall, so I won't be able to use it as directly in my classes, but uh, Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's just the whole uncertainty, even, you know, in the last week as we approach the semester, I know as faculty are coming to me wanting, can, can I switch to hybrid? Can I have the most flexibility? Mm. And I, w- I want to give them that, but we have some pr- processes set in place where it's not completely my decision. They have to go above my head to a provost and to a vice provost and get approvals. And we want some things to be on campus because we want a lively, invigorating campus, but at the same time, a safe one. So yeah. it's going to be a real interesting balancing act. And mm. here comes the anxiety. You can kind of feel it coming back onto campus as we get ready to back. We were going to have back to campus meetings with our college and our university that we're going to be face to face that are now pivoting to webinars mm. on Zoom. Here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> Well, should we wrap up that conversation here, the discussion of? Yeah, that's great.